Hey there everybody and welcome back to another session of the new Let's Play Team Fortress 2. So, we've already covered one class for offense, one for defense. Now let's take a look at one for support. This here is the sniper class. Oh wow, quick save on him. So the sniper class, uh, judging by the name itself, uh, he specializes in long range assassination by doing headshots. And this could already be very appealing to a lot of people since, oh my god, headshots, yeah, this is my class. Yeah, this isn't Call of Duty, guys, get your facts straight here. <laughs> but still, nonetheless, a Sniper can be a very, very powerful class, and it really all comes down to very good aiming. And right now it's pretty easy since I'm aiming at the heavy. Oh, darn it. Dang it. Okay, I need to, I need to get this, I need to get this engineer. Nice. Okay, it wasn't a headshot, but it was worth charging up for. Because he could have potentially been devastating to all of us. Nope. There we go. Ah! So you can already pretty much tell like how devastating that the, 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 that this class can be. <laughs> Although I really shouldn't be that far uh, forward with the rest of the team here. Because generally you need to stay in the back. Wow, I got him mid-burning. That's pretty, pretty lucky actually. So anyway, a uh, general rule of thumb when playing Sniper is that, you know, stay behind your team most of the time. There's also, uh, one thing to keep note about your scoping ability is that, uh, try not to stay in scope too often. The reason why I say this is because there's two certain factors about the Sniper that could very, uh, that can limit you pretty badly. Uh, one is tunnel vision. And once you have tunnel vision, you can't see what's around you, so that's, uh, that's a big downside. And the second thing is your movement speed when you're scoped in. So, keeping those things in mind, if you're scoped in, you are very vulnerable, so, uh, especially to things like uh, spies and scouts, and other snipers, if applicable. Uh, other things in terms of, like, survivability, uh, well, I, I can't really think of anything else. You just need to be generally aware, aware of yourself. That's why you need to stay out of scope most of the time. Ah, well, can't do much there. I'm actually low on health here, too, actually. How did that... how did that burn me? Okay, at least we got this here. That's nice. And there's some other items that can help out with survivability, or pretty much to assist you, so to speak. Uh, so... When to play in Sniper is to... how to prioritize your targets. So pretty much the rule of thumb when priority, priori, prioritizing targets, can't speak, is one, is snipers. Other enemy snipers. Because who else can take you down at long range? Well, besides a spy with an ambassador. Uh, God, that's, that's really pushing in here. Uh. Oh, that part was being uh, credited to team. Keeping that sentry alive somehow. So anyway, uh, yeah, snipers will be, uh, pretty much the one that will be targeting you the most. So you need to stop that other sniper before he, uh, he wrecks havoc to your team. So besides that, um, the other one on the most prior big top priority list is medics. Because you're just one headshot away to prevent the other team from having an uber sort of a deal, and also prevent them from having pretty much the biggest benefit that the other team could have is heals. So, pretty much like that guy, because he could have potentially had an uber and could have wrecked us somehow. And there's a sniper around here. Okay, I really shouldn't be worried about that sniper really, because he really isn't daring to go around the corner. But his team is, so I can prevent that. Alright, more on the priority list. Uh, engineers, I think. 
Was it? Uh, actually, no. Uh, first off, is heavies. Heavies, heavies are pretty fun in order to like headshot. Okay, I don't know why I went after him like that. Just cause. So yeah, heavies, heavies are pretty easy to headshot. Just because they have pretty large bodies, they're slow. They're slow when they're all revved up, and they have just big heads in general. And they deal a high amount of damage, so they're pretty much like high priority target. <sighs> Darn it. And the other one I would say that would have to be engineers. Engineers could be another thing to try, although most of the time they're going to stay cooped up behind their sentry, so you need to try to like uh, uh, try to find the right angle to get them where their sentry nest is and such. That's pretty much what I can say for like priority list. Everything else is just like whatever's in front of you, just go ahead and shoot. Ah, damn it. Alright. So if you probably noticed earlier, like when you saw that engineer hauling his uh, sentry around the corner there, I had a body shot there. I attempted to do a headshot, but I killed him anyway. So that's what, that's the one thing I want to bring up, is uh, headshots versus body shots. Um, it really does not matter if you uh, attempted to kill them either way, because in the end, you got the job done. It really all comes down to matter of like, oh, this guy's pretty skillful with his headshots, and it'll be like, and then the other situation would be like, oh crap, he had like a body shot. That was like, ugh, I hate that. Like I said, it really doesn't matter. I kind of get that feeling as well when it comes to like body shots. Because you really can't tell from the enemy's perspective, like, if he was intended to do a headshot or purposely doing a body shot. So, weird things like that. Oh, God. So, yeah, there's that. And pretty much the last thing that I uh, mentioned in the intro video is uh, having that, uh, you know, every time you make a scope shot, it automatically resumes. Yeah, make sure you have that turned off. Not the headshot I wanted to do, but it's a headshot nonetheless. So yeah, that's pretty much all de general tips for the sniper, I would say. Yeah, so we'll get into the uh, unlocks uh, pretty soon here. Uh, well, pretty much what I'm having right now is just the default. Default is pretty much is going to be your bread and butter. Uh, no downsides, pretty quick, reliable, has like no gimmicks to it. And I say that because pretty much the other unlocks for the sniper, most of it is like not all that good. Some of them could be team based, some of them like situational. Some of them, if you're like pretty good at making headshots, but you know, weird gimmicks like that. And secondary, some of them are kind of team based, some of them are just like weird equipable, some of them like have good survivability. And melees, there's not much melees for sniper since you're not really meant to go into melee as much. So anyway, your uh, secondary, your SMG. SMG is pretty okay in terms of like if you like do a headshot on an enemy and then follow that up with an SMG in order to finish them off. That can be one thing. Or it can be just used for self-defense. Never really use that as for like just all out offense with this thing because it won't be as reliable damage, as well as the uh, damage spread on this thing can be kind of weird. I know a lot of people have been saying like the damage on this thing is like finicky, how the weapon spread is. Here, I'm going to take care of those. Yeah. At least the team is not getting damaged that much. And melee. Melee is nothing really all that special. I have like a different like melee weapon other than the Kukri, which is some sort of like machete sort of a deal. You're telling me. Oh, server's about to change here. We're on Gold Rush, by the way. Just another payload map. Nice. Yeah, we pretty much just carried the team on home here. Eh. 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 <laughs> well then. Just when I joined, that happened. Anyway, um, I did not get enough uh, map coverage of Gold Rush, so I hopped onto a different server just so I can uh, show you more of it. As well as showing you some of the unlocks for the sniper. So, starting off with the Machina. So, the Machina has this mechanic of when you have a fully charged shot, you gain a little bit of a damage bonus, as well as being able to uh, penetrate players. 
So this could make for some like interesting like collateral like damage sort of a deal. I ain't having that. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the situations where I had to use the uh, numpad to swap classes, just for the sake that I don't die. <laughs> Yeah, because burning to a pyro is, like, no fun. It's embarrassing. But you probably noticed, like, in the midst of the whole thing is that uh, I try to do uh, uh, fire from the hip. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> Instead, it just makes this weird sound cue. Up. Oh. Ah, get me out of here! What's with these close encounters with the pyro? Okay, thank you. Instead, let me just head back up here and grab this. So anyway, you can't fire from the hip. Uh, you have to charge in fully if you want to get the damage bonus and then do the collateral damage. So this weapon encourages you to stay in scope in order to take advantage of it, which in my case is about staying in scope. Yeah, it'll make you vulnerable. So you want to avoid doing that. Unless you're absolutely sure that you have your ass covered by your team, then then by all means, go for it. And that's what I mean by, like, having some sort of, like, gimmick weapons like that. And that part is going to go all berserk. Uh, but he died anyway. Neat. Uh, medic warped. Alright, come on. Uh, you know what? Yeah, we'll go up, up here instead. Oh yeah, also this thing uh, fires a tracer round. Visually, it looks like a railgun. But the bad side is, it reveals your position. So if I was to be saying seven from up here, they will know that I'm up here. Quite easily. That mag's really lagging. I can't even land a headshot. Nice. Hooray for railguns! Railgun rangers represent! I don't know, let me try sc uh, purposely staying in scope and see when it happens. Well, there's the damage bonus. It does way more than it needs to be. It's like 518, when really, highest it can be is like 450. Well, team's almost got this. Yep, team's got this. Hey, Spy. So yeah, that's the Machina. Uh, if you're kind of the guy that doesn't like to, uh, doesn't like the whole idea that you can't fire from the hip, then I say don't go go for it. Yeah, I, I personally don't like it. So yeah, I would uh, I would uh, equip, equip away from that. Oh, there's also the Tribalman Shiv. Tribalman Shiv. Um, what's different about this is that it does a lot less damage, but you'll be able to make your enemies bleed for about six seconds. Now, I've done the math, and technically, this actually does more damage than the standard melee, but seeing how it does that gradually over time, um, uh, that makes it so, like, it's kind of like the deciding point. Do you want to have gradual damage, or just straight up front damage with the standard melee? And, uh, I don't know, you can pretty much, like, do this by, like, hitting the enemy once when you get in melee range, back up, and then just hit him with some of this here, just to stack up the damage. It's, it's mainly good just to, uh, Take care of any kind of pesky spies or pretty much anyone who's trying to get up and close to your face. Just hit them once and just back up a bit. The melee is okay. I wouldn't say it's a bad melee per se. Not that the sniper has like outrageous like melees anyway. I'm trying to hide hide the dot. But, uh, Find a corner around here so they don't see me or see it. Nice. Yeah, I'm hiding behind. I'm hiding the dot around the corner so they don't see it, so they won't think like, "Oh, there isn't a sniper watching this at all." I was using it too. And I'm trying to prove to him that I'm not a spy. I'm legit. There's the damage bonus again. It'd be nice if I got a collateral, though. Oh, 
on the world. Is there a sniper up there? Yeah, there was. Okay, this is probably might be a good time to do that collateral. Because they're all grouped up on the cart right now. Nice! Oh, that was wicked sick. Thank you, Heavy, for being a good demonstration. I say that was definitely satisfying. But yeah, that... But, but all in all, it's still some weird gimmick, but... I guess once you pull it off, it is fun, uh, actually. Alright, let me go ahead and swap out loadouts now. There we go. Alright, now this one is the Bizarre Bargain. Now this mechanic here is that... Uh, uh, from the start, the charge up rate on your uh, scoped-in shots is 20% uh, slower. But in order to make the charge go up even faster, you need to rack up headshots. So once you get up to like to two heads, it'll go back up to a standard charge rate. And even more uh, heads will add 10%. Uh, and I'm not sure what the cap is, but I'm not sure. And I'm gonna get chased. Scout, you better save me. Nice. Alright, so I racked up one head. But I fired and I missed, so I lost a head. So pretty much the whole gimmick with this is that you're under the like mindset is like, oh, I gotta make every shot count so I can rack up a lot of headshots and you know get a faster charge. Well, you see, if you do that, then you'll be less inclined to shoot, and you know you can use much more time just to shoot for the sake of shooting rather than wait and make a precious shot. And here we are where we like, and here we are last time back in the last server, and we're getting steamrolled. Freaking like team heavy going on around here. That's kind of like my thing, apparently. And also for that spy, I think. All right, looks like now we probably got this in lockdown. Yeah, took a lot longer in order to take that down because you know the charge up rate. Oh. Damn. It. So yeah, this weapon tries to encourage you to make every shot count, but really just go all, just go on, just uh, just take this to town pretty much. Don't care about the whole headshot bonus sort of a deal, except now I'm making it really matter right now. Every time you buy a shot or miss, yeah, it goes down, and now they really want me dead. Uh, okay, I'm really tempted. To to change classes right now because of this shit happening. Well, I kind of properly demonstrated the other unlock I used, which is the Shahansha. You see, I was kind of like below 50% health that got, that got me the damage bonus. But when I'm above 50%, it's uh... Oh wait, it's not 50. What am I thinking? It's 25. See, so yeah, if I'm above 50, it's 25 less. But if, it's by, if I'm below 50, then it's 50%, uh, 25% uh, more. Okay, perhaps we can go ahead and play this on, like, offense for once here. You know, probably because the reason why we lost was we didn't have a medic. Or actually, maybe we did, but, you know, I guess people don't want to play medic anymore. But anyway. And I also paired up with the Darwin's Danger Shield. And I think most for I think for the most part the enemy team had a lot of bullet based stuff, so I was able to like survive that a lot more. So you get more health, bullet resistance, however more explosive damage to your, uh, to you. And this makes it so that with this equipped, you'll be able to survive a lot of like uh, sniper versus sniper encounters. Basically, you don't get uh, quick scoped at all, which is kind of nice. In fact, when they made this change, that we figured that it was going to be like changed again immediately. So apparently, that wasn't the case. And this having this uh, paired up with the Shahansha means that once you get to uh, 70, 74 health, that means that the damage bonus is implied. But without the Danger Shield, it means you have to be at like at 62 health in order for that to work. So it's a bit of a minor point difference. 
All right, now let's switch on over to uh, this one. Hitman, uh, the Hitman Teak Maker. So what this here is that uh, there's a uh, small, there's a uh, damage penalty when you're ever doing body shots. So trying to like fire from the hip, it's a lot less. However, what this introduces is his, uh, is his own uh, focus meter that it has. What you do is you need to rack up some kills until it's fully uh, charged up. And when you activate focus meter, you basically go into this like shooting rampage, basically, where the charge, where the uh, oh, Gunner's carbine, go go go! Nah, darn. I'll explain that in a bit. Oh god, speed demon! Okay. So anyway, once you activate your uh, your focus meter, you go into this like firing frenzy sort of, sort of a deal, and and actually allows you to stay in scope when you're doing this uh, focus fire thing, and your charge rate goes up by uh twenty five percent, I believe, having you do like go in this uh, shooting craze. Oh, he had the danger shield as well. That's why I wasn't able to headshot him. Damn it, I already took the health pack. It's gonna respawn for quite a while. Well, I wasn't able to show off the focus mirror just because I didn't see like a good like lineup of like enemies or something. There we go. There we go. Booyah! Oh shit. Headshotting a scout is pretty satisfying. I got let's admit to that. Let me just tap this once. Hmm. How might I take care of this? Whatever, I killed him. That all, that's all that matters. I killed the pyro. That's all that matters. That fucking matters. <laughs> okay, I'm going insane. Um, I'm, I'm really losing my touch. I'm kind of like getting into the moment here. So anyway, Cleaner's Carbine, what I just demonstrated here, is that um, it fires a lot slower. However, when you uh, kill someone with it, you're granted like uh, mini crits for a certain amount of seconds. And I think it's 10 seconds, because it does last a pretty long time. So when you have that mini crits, um, you could pretty much like do some like kill streaks with the with the carbine, or maybe even follow up with this with a scoped in sniper shot and all that. What are you doing? Hey, probably nothing. I mean, if you're not a fan of the SMG to begin with, then chances are you probably won't like the carbine either. Even more so because, you know, like, less, uh, slower fire speed on this. This is like the most minimalist of, like, um, team players that they're using right now. And yet, they're still doing just fine. Whatever, activate that. Nah. Yeah, well, you can see that I activated that focus meter thing, and uh, that happened. I stayed in scope while I tried to fire off, like, several times. Yeah, we did not have a good uh, team comp going on here. Yeah, because we're mainly comprised of, like, you know, a lot of support stuff. Which, I'm one of them, but... Looked like I was still, like, top teaming, sort of speaking. Yeah. So yeah, uh, overall Hitman Team Maker, not a bad choice, I guess, because, I mean, if you're used to firing from the hip, but you still want to have the reliable damage for, like, the 
no scopes. Uh, stick with default yet again. And the gimmick of uh, having to hit reload and go into focus fire a lot. You can't scope out of it at any time when you're doing that. You just have like faster charge and, and such. I don't know, it's it's okay. And Cleaner's Carbind, it's okay too, I suppose. Oh yeah, there's no random critical hits and uh, lower clip size here. Oh, and it, I correct myself, it's 8 seconds, not 10. I don't know why I was thinking that. But anyway, we had enough of Gold Rush here, so uh, I suggest we go ahead and hop on to another map. I'll see you in a bit.